Hello friends, and welcome back to another Harry Potter book nook tutorial. This one isn't as severely detailed as the last one I did, but it was still a little complicated nonetheless. Here is what it looks like when it's all out in little pieces. Here's my instruction book and oh, oh well, guess we're gonna have to wing it. There's some parts at the end that starts at step seven, but I will help guide you through it. First, we are going to get out the basics, and paintbrush, paint tray, paints, black and white, because this is going to be grey washed, a little jar of water, a sponge and a paper towel, and that's about all we need for this uh, first, first set we're going to work on. First, we're going to do the inside paneling, that's what's on the outside, but we're going to work on the inside right now. That top hole at the back is where the lights are going to go out. And yes, this kit does come with lights and I found them to be just a tad short, but it worked nonetheless. So let's make a wash. Black, a bit of white. We're gonna make sure we get a bit of water in there so we can just wash it through. And you can always, you can always pick whatever color you like, but I liked the kind of dark grayish tones for this book nook. Let's begin. There we go. All done. Skipped forward. We're going to wet the sponge and now we're going to give it a little bit of texturing as I like to call it uh, so it's not just flat gray. We're going to and again this is detailed. You don't have to go into as much detail as I am but this is why I do it step by step with you so if you want to follow along you can pause the video do a little bit hit play and continue on with me. So a bit of black. Oh, by the way, if you could like and subscribe to my channel, that would help so I could keep going with my little book nook tutorials. Now we're going to do white. Black, a bit of white. I know it looks weird, but we're going to keep going. A bit more black. It, again, it looks a little strange at the moment. It will it will blend together. You take a sponge and then you kind of just start to smear it a bit. Make a gray even, blend in between the white and the black. Comes up with this kind of blotchy look. This is going inside, so you're not, not even gonna see it very clearly, but there you go. After a bit of grays and a bit of whites and a bit of blacks and just a bit of a wet sponge, kind of smushing it together, Blend it in slightly, rub it together, just, well, you don't want to press too hard to rub it, but you just want to blotch it like I'm doing. It kind of blends it slightly together so it's not as harsh as just a white blob and a black blob. And this is what it comes out as. So to me, it looks better than just straight gray. These are kind of the steps that go along the edge of the inside of the book. I'm going to work on this. And again, I like to use Gorilla Glue wood glue. You can use any sort of crafting glue, but I find Gorilla Glue works the best. It's very strong and it holds well. So now we're going to make another gray for the insides. A bit of blending. Again, you do want to add a little bit of water just so it's not so thick when you first start to paint. You want to have it a little, a little more, not watery, but a little more watered down. So I'm just going to do some washes. I'm going to speed it up here. Ta-da! We're done. Okay, so next we're going to work on the floor, and again, I did go a little detailed on this, and you don't have to do it, you can just do a wash and be done with it, but I'm going to show you, step by step, how I did it. Start with a wash, medium gray. Okay. 
and also when you, before you start maybe pull out a few different sizes of brushes so this one's a little bit of a wider brush I have a small thin tiny little wee one for details uh, I have large medium small type of thing so maybe pull those out before you start so they're handy here we go quick wash I'm gonna let that dry for a sec and then we're gonna continue on with doing different tones for the stone stone path that's on the floor now I'm gonna take my medium brush now the blank spaces around the sides that's where the um, that's where the steps are going that we just made so let's start with a lighter very light 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 gray I'm gonna do random stones here and there I'll speed it up just a titch Take a darker tone. And again, I was just going to go for that kind of old castle stone floor kind of look. So I'm trying to make it multi toned. Again, you can just do a gray wash. That's fine. Whatever you want, or whatever color you're using green black gold it's up to you gonna mix another tone kind of in between the two Okay, there we go. Done the multi tones, and now we're going to go into a bit of detailing, adding a bit of darker tone in the lighter tone, and vice versa for the dark. And this is just trying to give a weathered look to the stone, so they just don't look flat. Again, you don't have to, you don't have to go this crazy, but I just like to throw that detail in. lighter on the dark and it may look kind of weird but in the end when it dries it'll look kind of cool going back in with a bit of dark you can play around with it. It's just paint, you can paint over it. Blend it. Almost it's like a shadow effect if you if you will.
and see what I'm doing. Just adding dark, light, dark, light, blend. is a lot different than how we started. And just a little bit of damp, a you know, little wee bit of water, blend where you need to finish blending, finish it off. I'm gonna take my acrylic paint pen I have a kit with numerous colors, but we're going to use black. And we're just going to fill in around the lines here, just to clean it up, give it a crisp edge. As you can see, as I go along, it does define the individual stones a little better. You, you may not like that. You may like it all blended. That's fine. I did like having the lines a little bit more defined. All right, looking pretty good. So there it is finished. We're just going to sit that down, let it dry. back to these steps. Make sure they're in the right order because they do have a small, medium, large size. There we go. So that's how they're going to be. And again, those are also not wholly the same gray wash, as you can see. Some are a little darker, some are a little lighter, just slightly. So you can go ahead and do that or you can just do them all the same. That's what it's going to look like. So far, so good. Now we're going to work on these little pieces that go on the inside. Oh, well, we're going to look at the mirror first. So these little narrow pieces all will be glued together. Again, when you're gluing, you just have to make sure that you, once you smush it all together, um, try to remove as much as you can right away after they're stuck together and then go back in later and, and kind of clean up the excess glue. Sometimes when there's excess glue and you try to paint over it, 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 it won't absorb the color, so you'll have weird blotches. Again, this is inside the book nook, so you're not going to see it um, too, too well, but it's still nice to be as detailed as possible. So let's go ahead and line those up. And uh, clips are going to be your friend for this tutorial if you have any. Any sort of clips or clamps, small ones and large, you will see in a moment. So while that's gluing, we're going to go ahead and wash these gray. I will do a little more detail on those later in the video, but for now I'm happy with that. We only need to do the one side because the back side faces the wall of the book. Here's the arches. We're going to give those a wash as well. All right, here we go. All done. I'm going to uh, 
do a bit of detailing on those lines later as well. All right, let's take off our clips. Got glue to clean up. I'm gonna scrape that off with this dull blade. Anything sharp or even sandpaper helps clean off. Pointy toothpick, anything like that, but you do want to try to get as much off, A, eh? so it's not blobby, and two, when you go to paint it, the wood will absorb the paint. Okay, now this very narrow piece goes on the front. I glue all along there. It's very tricky that it's, it's because it's narrow, so obviously glue is going to ooze out a little bit, but we just, we just try our best. There we go. You line it up. Take your time. I have to say that I found this a little tricky because some of the wood um, that came with this book, Nick, was warped. And some of the parts for this mirror were warped. Oh, too small. Got to get the bigger one out. So, yes. There was gonna be some pieces that are a little warped. This one was warped at the top, so it didn't fully glue on one of the peaks, but again, that's okay, because it's inside the book, but you don't see it. But here's where those clamps come in handy. I'm gonna clip that on, let it dry, clean up the glue in a little bit. I'll get rid of some now, but there will be more to clean later. Scrape it off. There we go. Okay, I ended up with two of these. I have no idea why. I'm just gonna glue them together, make him a little wider so when we glue him down to stand, it's easier. Found some photos of Harry online. I'm trying to find the right size. I just dropped it onto a document in multiple sizes. So we're gonna I'm gonna put a face on them. The mirror is not the best quality that came with it it's kind of got marks on it but again I want to I want to make it look kind of cool so I, I, I printed his face I'm gonna use a little clamps glue them together like that go ahead and cut out Harry's head <laughs> I did kind of have a giggle or two when I was doing this all right let's put his face on <laughs> tweezers or anything like that. It's pretty small. You're going to have to play around if you do this when you're printing it. Oh, hello, Harry. There you are. Good enough. I'll touch it up later. So I know the hood's showing at the front, but I painted it over, so you don't notice it in the mirror. I'm going to paint his cloak black. And just be careful and go around the pieces that we're going to do different colors like a scarf and the part of the hood I'm going to go in and do a darker gray instead of black just to highlight. This is where the little brush comes in. Get way in these tiny little spots. Inside of the hood is hair. So yeah, let's just get rid of the front hood because that's not supposed to be there. Paint it solid black, it disappears.
Again, the mirror isn't the best, so you're not going to see a ton of detailing. It's, it still looks good if you try to do as much as you can because it does reflect a little bit and it's nice to have it look as cool as you can possibly get it. Maybe your mirror will come in better than mine. Gotta go around the edges. Fix his hair a little bit. Cool. Alright, now we're going to do the Gryffindor scarf. Get my acrylic pens. And off we go. I like it. Looks groovy. Alright, did a little bit of black around his feet for shoes and used dark grey for the back line of the hood and a little bit of a white for a white shirt in that V spot. It looks like he's wearing a shirt. And we're going to make sure we have the edges nice and clean. So add some black around it. And I think Harry's ready. This mirror had the writing around it, but I mean, it was so tiny you couldn't see it, so we're just going to give it a nice gray wash. And I did do this fairly watered down, almost comes across as a walnut. It does. It's not walnut, but it, it has that look of a old antiqued wood kind of frame around a mirror, so I think I think it looked okay. I don't really know why I painted the back, but you don't have to paint the back. There's my wonky mirror, which I have already glued on to the back of that back piece of wood. This now is going to be glued to that. See where I'm saying it's kind of warped? Those top pieces kind of stick out a bit, but again, you don't really notice it once it's put inside the book nook. Make sure there's nothing sticking out around the edge. And we're gonna glue it onto the mirror. This is where those big clamps are gonna come back into play. I'm going to clean up the excess glue and then we're going to clamp. So there we go. Glue cleaned and clamp. Put that aside. Let it dry. Now the front. I did all of those afterwards. I didn't film it but I mean, you can use whatever kind of colors you want. I, again, I stuck with black cat, dark gray sorting hat, did a white, white owl with a bit of gray. And I did, there. there's some little pieces that, that come separately and there was one owl that was separate, so I glued him on the left side after I was all done. I'll do the detailing later on that. Let's skip back to this. I'm just gonna take a black acrylic pen and just highlight that that line that just goes above the arch and there see that looks I don't know it just looks a little better stands out more these I took some darker gray paint went along there and in the little circles in the middle like that there we go. Looks 
better. You can do it however you like. Make it a little bit plain. I kind of like the, the detail. There we go. All done. So those, there's one little knob on each in the middle sticks in the hole. So we're going to go ahead and glue that in there. just one on each piece that goes into a slot. The other slots are for the arches. So in order for me to get him to stand up properly, I'm going to have to go in and get these other guys put into place. go and then we're gonna have to put a little glue right there hold them together we'll clean the excess up I just want to get them get this little piece of cardboard to work swipe Get the other ones in. Pretty cool. Now we're going to put the arches in. And they go in these spots here. One, two, and three. I had to be creative. Apply a bit of glue on the back side of those inner arches to the outer arch and use my clamp. Let's put this in. Put glue on the bottom of the mirror. It's going to go somewhere in there. You don't want them too close to the front. You want them almost at the back, not quite. Don't forget, Harry has to be standing a certain distance in front of it as well. Okay, now we're going to put Harry in. So, put some glue on his feet. Put him in. Looks good. Oh yeah, here we go. More clamps. Gotta be creative. <laughs> you also have to be careful. This stuff, this wood is, is fragile. So you have to be careful, but I do feel it's important that you do this step with gluing the arches to the inner arches. Just so it kind of sticks together a little better. Holds holds up well. Okay. 
So yes, it takes a little longer than what I, sh I showed. I, I paused the video and brought it back to you, but leave it glued for a little while. Here I'm just going to start adding some detail. I didn't show all of it on film, but I just went and put a bit of gold around on spots, down the pillars, did a bit of dark gray paint detail as well down the pillars. Here we're going to apply some glue to the inside. Now I did this step because if you don't, you see through to the other pieces of wood in the other side and it looks very strange. So it's very tricky, but I did get this frosted piece of thin plastic and I used gold tissue to put on the other side so the light shines through. You can paint it, but the light won't shine through as well. So tissue that shines through. It did take a while and tissue paper is very delicate, so you're going to have to take your time. But here you see some of the detailing I did. I used the black pen on the arches and the gold pen. And I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to apply the back piece like so. Now I had that light strand just through there and then I realized I shouldn't have done that so I cut a little slot where that square is where the light comes out and pushed it in later so I'll explain that so now we're gonna start on the one side I want to put them all the way up here so it kind of shines through those windows and then we're gonna go across the back so it glows against up against the wall and I try to hide them because I don't really want to see the lights I want to see the glowing of the lights but I don't want to actually see the lights so let's begin and you're gonna have to be careful with your fingers the glue gun is hot. So this is where we kind of want to run with it. That's what it's going to look like. So yes, this is on the right track. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to have anything sticking where it shouldn't. There we go. A strand goes up. Do a little bend. Bring it back down. This is where I think the light shine should have been a little wee bit longer even an inch so go around the back go around the sides all the way to the other Did a little loop there because I wanted to make sure the light was shining on each kind of section and not having a, a dark spot a spot where there was no light I'm gonna run it down run it back up run it across the top and that's where it'll pop out a little short so this is where I put that little notch right there snipped a piece of the wood so I could slide that through now we're gonna take the glue gun and I'm using the glue gun just to get this done in a quicker manner you can use the wood glue, but I just wanted to get it done so I could show you, so it dries faster. There we go. Get rid of the excess glue. Now we can do the sides go pay attention to the flat edges so you know which piece goes where so it's going to go on this side because the outside piece has the harry potter writing and the golden snitch on it so now you want to make sure to cover as much as you can i put it in the slots but i did also put it on the back sides of those stairs i'm going to pop it into place I 
I will paint that outer wall in a bit. Make sure you're really pushing it in so they lock into place and glue where they should. I have to go back in and just really give it a little bit of a squeeze in those little slots. Give it another push. And later I did take a little bit of sandpaper and sanded the excess off so it didn't affect my paint. Here we go again. When you use a glue gun, you gotta work quick. There we go. Walls are on. Now we're gonna do the roof. Make sure you paint both sides of the roof, inside and out. There we go. Looks pretty cool. Now we got to put this guy on. This is where I was like, yeah, this stuff's a little warped, but we worked with it. So yeah, put a little, just be aware where it's going. Don't put glue too far into the, where those stairs are that wrap around the mirror, because then you'll see it. So I would put that on there before you apply the glue, just to see where it sits. And then, you know, and there's the guys that I, I painted after the fact. This is what it looks like when you turn the lights. See the glowing behind the pillars? That's, that's the kind of effect I like. So that's what I was going for. You could put the lights wherever, to be fair. You don't have to do them where I put them. Now we're gonna now we're gonna do a, a gray wash on the outside of the box. Really put a lot of water on this one just to just to give it a wash so it wasn't super super solid. Take your sponge, soak that all up, and away you go. This wood really absorbs the paint because it's quite dry. So that's how it looks. And I'm gonna take my gold pen and do this golden snitch. You really have to pay attention to where it weaves in and out there. Make sure you're painting the proper ones and don't lose count of which ones you've done because then it'll just look kind of off. So there we go. So it's my tool art acrylic pen and we're going to do black for the writing you can get these pens on Amazon that's where I got them there we go again books technically are going to go up against the side so you may choose not to bother with the detailing. It's totally up to you. And that's what it looks like. And I, there's the extra owl. I painted kind of grayish colors, tones. Put him on after. Looks pretty cool. Here's where it got a little bit warped. You can see it's just not perfect, perfect along the front edge, but that's okay. You can see it, it gaps a little wee bit there, a little bit down there, just because everything was slightly warped, but that's okay. You're not, you're looking at it mostly head on, so I wasn't going to have a fit over it, but you can see the little detailing I did. Again, you can choose whatever color you like. Well, there we go. There's another book nook completed. And we'll be ready to do another one soon.
So I hope you liked my tutorial. I hope it helps you. You can leave questions below. I always will answer. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to help my channel grow. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another book nook soon to come. Bye for now.